this election is going to get real. I mean, I can go, I can see citizens, Loki, standing outside of these voter places. Like, you know, you go to vote. I can see people standing out with their phones out, just making sure. I'm like, nope, nope, I ain't doing it this year. If we lose, we lose. But God damn it, at least I know I stood by and uh, made sure y'all did it fair. Like I said, if we lose, we lose. I mean, if Trump loses it, it is what it is. But at least we know it was done fair. Now that all eyes are on this whole election fraud thing. At this point, yeah, since all eyes are on it, if he lose, he lose. It is what it is. You know, we only got to deal with Kamala for four years. It's not that bad. It's going to suck. It's going to suck. But it's only four years. <laughs> From rags to riches, it's based off your attitude and work ethic is what makes America beautiful. I ain't even going to lie. Man, you ask the citizens of Minnesota, they'll say he ran this shit terribly. They, there's people in Minnesota that call him an outright traitor. So I am confused why they picked this man. Maybe because he's just as left as it comes. He's easy controllable because he really has no money. So, you know, he, Walsh just looks like a, a, I'm going to be real with you, a liability. He just looks really easy to control. That's how I see We've done in Minnesota. I, I ran and won a, a congressional seat in a very red district for 12 And a hey, press wagon muffin. You want to know why it's only 4 or 5%? Because only 4 or 5% of people at Canaxia, I guess. But I would say a uh, a more proactive approach to, you know, young little boys, mental health, mental health. Like, let's have a more proactive approach to addressing the mental health of men in today's society. Because maybe we fix the mental health problem. Just maybe if we fix that, the gun violence will go down. I mean, let's be real. All crime usually does lead back to some mental health problem. Word of the day. Weird, weird, weird. They're all going. Well, I will also say this, the country of those people, they, they have better community than we do. They have a more uh, homogeneous society. So that means, well, a bunch of J Japanese are going to school to all Japanese. You feel me? It's like, I would also say that they have a stronger uh, social cohesion than we do before we just go saying that, oh, well, it's because of their gun laws or, or other countries do well and all that with their guns, but not us. Well... Let's line our culture up with theirs and let's try to break down why, why that is. Uh, I, I feel like that requires a deeper conversation. And shout out Michael Ryan, man. Left. It's so easy to give away other people's money. <laughs> I mean, I swear to God. I swear to God. And, and that's what and that's the problem with the left. They want to hire tax the rich, tax the rich. And they're only saying that because it's not their money. It's not their money, bro. It's like, bro, it's like you came down to a vote with your kids in the house. And and the majority of everybody in the house votes for ice cream, but you're the minority who got to pay for everything. So that's kind of how it is in America right now It's like we're asking for the rich people to pay everything because it doesn't require us to do anything else. It doesn't require us to improve or anything. We're just relying on those who've succeeded to put up everything for us. And that's not how it works. But we're not weird. Guys. That's how we're to the next one. We got Waltz coming up on a rally. All right, let's hear him long form rally it. Let's see what he got for us. It's going to be more Trump bashing, more man talk policies. Who knows? Next up is the Trump interview. say that you know you know shout out to unions because i'm not gonna sit here and act like corporations have always been you know all right corporations have just been cool like if we remember the robber baron days i mean these guys were shiesty gang i'm talking about pulling in billions upon billions while paying everybody 10 cents so thanks to well the people standing up for themselves and creating these unions you know yeah we, we, we done curved them a little bit on it but we gotta remember though 
the unions only work once you're hired on. If they're not offering no jobs because they be, are being taxed to death, then the unions don't really help. And I just have to tell you, there's so many great things here, but I have to tell you, for Americans across Oh, wow. The country, Hold on. You need to send Jackie Rosen back to the Senate. You need to send Jackie Rosen back. And shout out Steve Hugs, man, for signing up for the starter fan pack, man. Yo, welcome to the family, big dog. Welcome to the family. Glad to have you here at St. Kimi. Looks like a military man, too. My man. First response. I, I was up visiting them last month and just to see the courage, and this is what Americans do at a time like this. Uh, we gather together. And look, all of you, truly, so many things you could do. You came early, you got in line, you're waiting. Uh, we know why you're here. Uh, you're, you're gathering with community, you're gathering with folks who know. You drove from Carson City, you did all the things necessary. You came here for that very simple and beautiful reason. You love America. You love why you're here. Well, thank you. And I, I gotta say, you, you probably figured this out about me. I just, I, I kind of talk the way I, the way I see it, and, and I'm a little bit old school. But I have to tell you, uh, like all of you, the deep respect for this country, what we have. Call me old fashioned. But a president's character and words should matter. They do matter. They do matter. It's presidents when this country is at its most challenging time. At the heart of the Great Depression, that first inaugural address, President Franklin Roosevelt, as he saw Americans scared, struggling, wondering what was next, made those famous words that we all heard when we were in school and knew that that's what America was about. All we have to fear is fear itself. And we stuck up and folks helped their neighbors. Then we saw communism spreading across the globe, suppressing freedoms, crushing democracy, and it was growing. And Ronald Reagan stood up and said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. That's what we did. Hmm. And in the most consequential presidential election of our lifetime, in the only presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, Donald Trump stood up and said they're eating cats, they're eating dogs. And you went out and you went out there and said, I'm friends with school shooters. And I misspoke. And I'm a knucklehead. But okay though. Okay. Okay. How does that make sense? Tell me, how does that make sense that they rolled into Ukraine under Biden Harris administration? And bro, if you actually looked at that interview with uh Putin and Tucker Carlson, bro, Putin even said, "Yo, I try to contact NATO. I try to get into contact with the U.S. I'm asking what's going on. It's like what y'all doing?" And nobody responded. And everybody's mad that Putin done stepped up. It's like it's crazy. But for to sit there and say that, oh, Trump let Putin ride into Ukraine when it was under the Biden-Harris administration, I'm like, hold on, hold on. Did, did we just forget reality? Did we just forget the timeline here of when this all happened? None of these conflicts or wars happened under Trump. All this happened under the Biden administration. Let's, let's be clear about that. <laughs>
There's news reporting that Donald Trump has had as many as seven private phone calls with Vladimir Putin. I can guarantee you that Kamala Harris and I do not Bro, have and y'all don't even know what a traitor is. To, to, to be honest with y'all, you know that, right? You don't even know what a traitor is. So stop misusing the word just to make it an insult. It's like, bro, you, you know, for me to be a traitor, I would literally have to be in a position to betray the U.S. I'm no government official. I'm no, God knows I ain't president or secretary of state. It, no, I'm none of that. I'm not even the goddamn mayor to be a traitor of the U.S. government. So stop misusing it. You know, you're yeah, y'all misusing these words. And for some reason, y'all liberals like to misuse words and <laughs> redefine words, which is even crazier. Like they ain't already have a meaning. Dictators on speed dial. So. <laughs> Look, it's pretty simple. You get it. Our allies don't trust him. The people who work with him know how dangerous he is. And people like Putin mm -hmm. up, and Trump looks up to him. Because what we know is they can walk all over and he's easily played. Flattery will get you everywhere with Donald Trump. Look, his own national security advisor warned us <laughs> he is easily manipulated by people like Putin. But again, how i mean nobody's talked to putin and because nobody's talked to putin we have this com this conflict in ukraine so because he actually was cool with putin and kept putin at bay out of ukraine y'all mad and now y'all want to act like oh well because he talked to him it, it it didn't work out or because well, he talked to him he bent over for him i'm like y'all sound stupid like, and let me, I'm mean, let me explain to you how stupid y'all, some of y'all sound right now. Why the hell are we, do we want to go against a superpower? Yes, Russia is a superpower. The big three, to be honest with you, is us, China, Russia. At the end of the day, it's it, it's us. We are the big three. That bro, we are the balance. We are the economic balance, bro. The military balance in this world at the moment, bro. What the hell does it look like? us antagonizing russia with what they want russia don't get mad about what we want bro we want to go bomb a country over there take their resources you want to go bomb a country over there and do whatever they want russia don't come at our necks they don't do nothing but the one time russia tells us oh yo back off of this one we want to get mad and get in our feelings i mean bro do y'all bro? maybe you need to look at american history before y'all get all high and mighty about this situation It was good, Gerard. Can you prove that? I mean, no, 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 dog. Yan, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Y'all need to be able to prove this. I mean, the, the, the lying is egregious at this point. Prove it. Where's the phone calls? Where's the goddamn recordings at this point? Because y'all apparently took him to court, even though the Russia gate was proven to be a lie, and the Biden and Hunter Biden's laptop was proven to be truth. But please tell me where is y'all proof that Trump was making these conversations? Because they never show him; they just say it, and y'all just believe it. I'm like, all right, cool. Where's the proof? Show me the proof. Like, because I find it very hard to talk to a man who can't even speak English, but okay, without a translator, but okay, over the phone, all right, all right, yeah, y'all logic matching up, okay. Every day. Well, and now, now, as we watch in our hearts go out, and as governors and as American citizens, we see the heartache, the turmoil, the loss, the trauma that happened after Hurricane Helene and a natural disaster. And we know we work together. You saw it right here during the Davis fire. I watched all of you, many of you. You stopped campaigning and started collecting goods for people who were in the fires. You stopped doing politics and other things to look out for your neighbor. But now we've got Donald Trump staff telling us that Donald Trump was refusing to send aid to disasters until he found out how the people in the 
Nigga, what? What? So now because this man showed up for these people better than our own government has because the Biden administration has been, bro. So the FEMA program, the whole FEMA thing, they lied and said that they, they weren't giving money to immigrants. But if you look at the FEMA website, they have something called the SSP that is literally designed to give money to immigrants and non-citizens. Well, illegal immigrant and non-citizens. We're going to get into that topic later. But the fact that he want to see here and say, that, oh, he only wanted to go there when he found out they were voting, who they were voting for. Bro, there's people making TikToks are, that are happy that these people are going through this tragic situation because of who they're voting for, which is Trump. No, 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 no. Trump didn't do that. Y'all did. Well, I know that the bar has been lowered on these things, but can we all just agree this is the kind of stuff that would have ended political careers before they started? Bro. I always say the number one rule of Marxism, or maybe the top five rule of Marxism is, bro, blame them for what you are doing. So if we're ignoring states because, you know, of who they vote for, which they're doing, then we're going to go ahead and blame that on Trump, even though, you know, we're we're the administration that FEMA has been under and that FEMA has now been, you know, the wall has been tapped. FEMA ain't got no money because then it gave it like over one point, like two billion to, to illegals. And don't worry, we're going to prove it in this stream. Trust me, I got y'all. Really? You know he will say and do whatever is good for Donald Trump. But here's the thing. That's not Kamala Harris. And Kamala Harris will stand up to folks like Vladimir Putin, and she's made it clear. And here's why, and I love this. From her first day as a prosecutor, all the way up to being vice president, she walked in the courtroom the first time, and she said she uttered five words in that courtroom. Kamala Harris, for the people. Kamala Harris, for the people. Mm. Took on the predators, took on the fraudsters, trying to get people out of their homes, returning money to them. People tried to take union pensions. And if you don't want to believe me, go look it up. FEMA, SSP. Go look it up before y'all come in here talking about misinformation. I urge you, because I'm dead ass serious about, about this. Go look that shit up right now, please. SSP FEMA. The truth is right there in front of you, but they'll lie to your face. She stood up to transnational gangs trying to human traffic or move drugs, and she stood up to corporate interests. And this is the thing that we're all hungry for. She never hesitated to reach across the aisle to solve problems. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. Now, I'm proud to be her running mate, and she oftentimes says this. Where could a kid from Oakland in a middle-class family run with a kid who grew up around the farms of rural Nebraska? Boy, when we talk small towns, there's, there's something we do. We try and talk small towns each other. When well, you say, I grew up in a small town, how many people? 400. People go, oh, impressive, 300. And then, then I will say 24 classmates. And then, oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. But what she says is, growing up in a small town, where else in America can a kid who grows up in a small town in the world of Nebraska, and a kid who grows up in Oakland and her mom, single mom, working hard to get him a house, where else but in this country can those two be on the ticket to be president? <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know what we know? Those who want to divide us, what Kamala knows, whether it's Oakland or whether it's Duke, Nebraska, what we learned around those type of people, we didn't grow up in the same place with Jesus. We grew up around the same people. People who knew you took care of your neighbors. You looked out for the common good. Those are the values that we grew yeah. up with. Those are the things that motivated us to run for public office. The same thing that motiv motivated Kamala Harris to run for that. Those offices that she did. And look, how nice will it be to have those values in the White House of the United States? Hmm. You know, now, I know there's some of y'all. No, let me just show y'all this video real quick because, uh, 
And shout out PBD because he went all the way deep into it so everybody can understand what's going on. Let's go. In all these places, so far this year, we've given 24.4 billion to Ukraine, 11.3 billion to Israel, 1.9 billion to Ethiopia, 1.6 billion to Georgia. Yeah, so look at that for me real quick. Yes, yes, billions, guys. Billions, billions, billions. And we don't got nothing for our own people. I'll be right back. Jordan, 1.4 billion to uh, Egypt, and the, it keeps going. The lit, on, uh, and $9,000 per illegal immigrant that has entered the United States. Okay, and we give them housing, we give them everything. And people that are dying and drowning in the United States, Tom, get $750. And then Alejandro Mayorkas. each per household. Per household. Alejandro Mayorkas, who I despise. I despise. Earlier this year said, Pat, we're good. We're ready for hurricane season. Now he's saying we don't have the money. We don't have the money to help Americans. Now we're about to get hit again, and we are shit out of luck. I'm sorry for my language. And this is what bothers me, Pat. This is all of our tax money. All of our tax money, and then when we need it, where is it? So the analogy is this, Pat. You live in a house, you're putting your money in a piggy bank. You're filling it up, you're filling it up for emergencies or whatever. You leave, Pat. Your parents are taking the money and giving it all to the neighbors. Neighbors, neighbors, neighbors. Then something, God forbid, happens to you, your car accident, you don't have insurance, and you're like, hey, mom and dad, I need the money. And they go, we don't, we don't have... We gave it to all the neighbors. That's exactly what the hell they're doing with our money. So, again, and I hate to bring it back to the voting. If you vote for these people, this is what's going to happen. We yeah. should be America first, not yeah, every other country. Know. And now we're seeing it firsthand, Tom. Disaster is hitting, and they don't have money to help us. I think it's the, the greatest crisis that any leader can have is when his people lose confidence in him. That's the greatest crisis a leader can have. Uh, when you're sitting there and the people around you don't have uh, confidence in you because you've screwed up the vision, you've screwed up the execution, you hired poor people you know poor performers mm -hmm. and suddenly now all the people around you lose confidence in you yeah. and that is exactly what's happening right now and i hope the Amer yeah, and i hope everybody's watching what's going on with the mishandling of funds of fema that's really what went down mishandling of funds and we'd have never found out if this ukraine didn't hit, if this uh hurricane didn't hit that's a sad reality they got American away with voters it. are paying attention to what's <laughs> happening here. A bitch. That first and foremost, America is a nation of charity. America's Americans have big hearts when it comes to this. And yes. I pray that they are looking around and finding the reputable agencies that you can put in because there's a lot of shysters that put a lot of BS out now, try to trick you into donations. Find the reputable organizations that you can help. You live in Oregon, you see this is happening, find the reputable organization, American Red Cross, whatever it is, that you could reach out to help with. Because Americans have a big heart, but I think Americans are smarter. You said, I think that the political campaigns sometimes think that the, the voters are dumb enough to, 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 to believe it. But I think they can believe with their eyes. Believe with your eyes what you're seeing. Local government and Ron DeSantis are doing a good oh job. Gosh, You've got gosh. people on the ground that are trying to do a good job in North Carolina that were being impeded and people were coming from the outside. Elon Musk bringing Starlink. Americans are not dumb. So and I if got, you got... like the leadership you see on this, you know, vote I, for four I, more years of it. I got a couple things I want to I want to ask you guys that we were researching yesterday. <clears throat> I got a few questions for you. So FEMA is under DHS, right? Yes. Department of Homeland Security. Alejandro Mayorkas. Department yep. of Homeland Security has roughly a hundred billion dollar budget. Of the hundred billion. All right, so a hundred billion dollar budget. All right, so that's FEMA. Well, Department of Homeland Security. All right, so let's. Let's go ahead and break this down. Billion dollar budget that they have. Last year's budget, 2023, towards FEMA was 29 billion. In 2022 was 27 billion. This year it's 20 billion. They kept 8 billion for previous damages and stuff that happened. No problem. As I'm going through this process of what's going on with Florida, I asked a few basic questions. And this is what we did. We sat yesterday and we just wrote some of these things down on how to judge and measure the effectiveness of a government agency. How are we supposed to measure? What questions should we ask with our taxpayer money? Number one, okay, response time. How quickly have they responded? You know what Mallorca said? He says, we knew about Helene a week before it happened. 
You had a week to prepare for it. Number two, allocation of funds. Where is the money going to? Okay. There's claims about the fact that a billion dollars of the FEMA money went to immigrants. I'm going to read that to you because they're saying that was not the. And those of you are out there, man, make sure y'all stay safe in Florida. Okay, man. It's like, you know, get up out of there. Get up out of there. Case, I'll actually read it to you from their website. Love it. Thank Number you. three, transparency. Where is the money? Where's the level of accountability? Number four, proactiveness. How proactive are you guys being with this? You have 20,000 agents, right? Number five, preparedness. You know this is Florida. You know this is hurricane season. Are you ready for it? Six, what kind of training do you offer to your personnel? Are they trained? Do they know what they're doing? Do they know how to go out and get things done? Seven, supply drop. Back in the days, we used to be able to supply drop. Yep. Hey, humanitarian, let's go drop some food. How are we doing that? No, apparently that's not happening. Eight, what is FEMA's track record? Do you, the viewer watching this, do you trust their track record? Maybe this is their first screw up. Thank you, Rob. Here's Mallorca's saying three months ago, the key words, we are fully prepared. Uh, You have to read exactly what he says. Play the clip. He says, we are fully ready for hurricane season to come. Play the clip. FEMA is tremendously prepared. This is what we do. This is 90 days ago. This is what they do. And the key here, Rebecca, is also to make sure that the communities who are potentially impacted are prepared as well. So this was 90 days ago. (laughs) The guy who runs the Department of Homeland Security, Mayorkas, comes on 90 days. Pretty much telling the American people, bro, we got this. Like, bro, come on, look, hurricane season, bro, we're FEMA. When do we not got y'all? And I'm pretty sure he didn't even expect a hurricane to come. Because let's be real, they're supposed to set this money aside for hurricane seasons, but a hurricane don't happen every year. And it's not just hurricanes uh, and fire, wildfires, also extreme heat, which certainly some parts of the United States are already experiencing. Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas sounding the alarm on FEMA funding right after the devastation of Hurricane Helene. Listen. We are meeting the immediate needs uh, with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. Uh, We do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. This all comes as the Biden-Harris administration. Yeah. 90 days ago, they said, yeah, we we got it. We got it, bro. Come on, we got everything y'all need. And now, last week, Wednesday, he comes with this BS. Listen. We are meeting the immediate needs uh, with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. Uh, We do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. I mean, can you imagine this man telling you that to your face? Like, I could only imagine the twitch in my hand to slap him. Like, you know what? I, I want to slap you because there ain't no way you just said that nine we- 90 days ago. People's lives depend on this fun. You going to tell me to my face we don't got it? I mean, oh, yeah, you're done. You're done. This all comes as the Biden-Harris administration. Wait, wait, you, can, you can let it play. Keep playing it. Mm-hmm. Spent over a billion dollars from a FEMA program on services for migrants. So- Yes, a FEMA program for services for migrants. I'm going to go, bro. And this is not just Fox saying this. This comes right out of FEMA's website, right out of their policy. This is a program that's under FEMA that supplies money to these immigrants. And look, last year, last year, over 300 million. This year, damn near 700 million. That's a yeah, that's a smooth billion right there. So, yeah, yep, a little bit over a billy, goddamn it. So, what's going on here? What the hell is going on here? The Biden Harris administration. Wait, you, can, you can let it play. Keep playing it. Spent over a billion dollars from a FEMA program on services for migrants. So check this out. They Attorney post General this right, and this scares the crap out of them to the point where if we go go to FEMA's website. FEMA is so worried about what's going on right now, right now with the amount of hate that it can. Just go to the homepage. And then if you go look at that, go to the next page. You know how it swipes right? Just go to the next one. Those three buttons on the bottom, go to the next one, and then go to the next one and watch what the next one is. Okay? Rumor response. Click on that. Go to it. What do you mean rumor response? So they're trying to say we never gave that money 
<laughs> to illegal, to what do you call it, to migrants. By the way, okay. I have the notes here to read it to you on what they spend the money on. I have a, from their website, I have to find it, but I have it here. You know what it says verbatim on their website? That this money, Brandon, if you guys can send it to me, I don't have it somewhere here. On There it is, I found it, ready? So they have this program called the SSP. FEMA has a program called the SSP. Rob, just go online and type in SSP FEMA. SSP FEMA stands for Shelter and Services Program. This is for FEMA. I'm going to read it to you from their site. Now, remember, this ain't PBD saying this. This ain't Fox News. This ain't nobody else saying this but FEMA. So get your biases out your head right now. Get your biases. This doesn't come from nobody else but FEMA. Okay? Can we all agree to that? Great. Let's get back to the show. They give grants to local governments and nonprofits to take care of undocumented immigrants congress boosted the budget from 360 million last year to 650 million this year watch this in the million. 2023 annual report says it provides shelter such as hotel motel services food and transportation including a 70 a including plane tickets up to 700 dollars a person god damn i mean man Shelter and Service Program is administrated by the FEMA in partnership with U.S. Customs and Borders. SSP provides financial support to non-federal entities to provide humanitarian services to non-citizen migrants following their release from the Department of Homeland Security, which just adds up because Customs and Borders will pretty much tell you that, yeah, we'll lock them up, we'll catch them, lock them up, give them a court date, and then we'll release them out to America then this SSP service comes in and gives them financial support, pretty much. And this is how it all works. So this is not coming from PBD, Fox News, Trump, not even set in key media. This is strictly coming from the FEMA's website. I mean, look, they'll, they'll go through the whole thing for you. 60 million last year to 650 million this year. Watch this. In the 2023 annual report says it provides shelter such as hotel, motel, services, food, and transportation, including a 70, a, including plane tickets up to $700 a person. All under the Biden-Harris administration. All under their administration. So where's y'all excuse for this, Kamala Harris supporters? Where's y'all excuse? Like, what is your excuse for the mishandling of funds for what? American people, but oh no, it's okay. It's okay because they're Trump supporters, right? Right? Is that that twisted logic y'all want to come with? Because you know your administration mishandled funds for American people. Okay. This is on document. By the way, when you go back to the last one you went on the FEMA side, Rob, there's a conversation about the fact that they have seventy-three billion dollars of unaccounted money. I don't understand what that was all about, Rob. I want to read this. Unliquidated to you. funds. As of, this is from their website, folks. This is not a blog. As of October 2022, FEMA estimates that 847 disasters declarations with approximately seventy-three billion dollars in what? Unliquidated funds remain remains open. open for this. Unliquidated funds. What are, all right, what the hell are they talking about? What they gotta sell some land, like some stocks, like bonds like what is these 73 billion dollars in unliquidated funds like like that means it's an asset or it's held up in some type of stock somewhere so like what's going on here like so i guess somebody trying to keep their bread this audit we focused on money. 79 open disaster declarations from the list that were declared in 2012 or earlier out of the 79 and at 89 authorized grant programs open as of October 2022, totaled $8.3 billion of unliquidated funds. During the audit, FEMA completed the closure of 13 declarations of 16 grant programs associated with the open declarations in our spoke re returning an estimated $5.7 billion. What does this tell you? They have the money. Of course. If they wanted to do something with it. Tom, why don't you think they do? Why do you think there lacks the urgency? I have got no idea why this game went over the weekend. Um, you know, there is, in a straight line basis, a straight line basis, 
you usually have presidents and people running to the microphone and saying, I've declared it a disaster area. And then the president runs to the microphone because he wants points. I am giving Governor Vinny. And here's the thing. <laughs> you cannot blame this on Trump in any way, shape or form because the SSP was first introduced in 2023, right in time for 2024, right in time for this election. I mean, hey, man coincidence uh coincidence isn't it isn't it quite the coincidence so yes fema when fema started the ssp yes it was in 2023 introduced under the biden harris administration so i don't know how y'all gonna try to flip that on trump maybe it's the t the tds that's really in your head but there's no way you can put this on trump actually this explains the record numbers in immigration at this point like I don't even know how you can blame this on Trump without sounding crazy, guys, okay? <laughs> One billion dollars in relief funds. I have also heard the cries of it's, it's a disaster area. So normally it's very political, right? Governor wants credit, the mayor wants credit, president wants credit, and then you would hope that the governor and the mayor are very, very concerned about the people. Now you've got FEMA here ending up running a PR campaign on their own website because they're caught with their pants down. That's right. They're actually caught with their pants down. It's like, hey, wait a minute. What about all the time you said you wanted $70 million for this and you only used 64? Where's the money? And the time you had 85 million for this disaster and you only used 50, where's the 35? And now they're coming up and doing this math and saying, oh, with all the stuff that was here, we returned estimated $5.7 million to the disaster relief fund. They spent that much money on food you know for their own parties while i was talking here this is this really is irritating mm. that you've got this bureaucrat named mayorkas who is standing there having like this public debate and argument and talking about we don't have the funds when they do have the funds the truth is the truth is they did spend it on and by the way did you notice the new name they have for it remember in government make everything taste better by giving it a, a different name such as non-citizen migrants. Did you catch that? They called them non-citizen migrants. Remember, it's not illegal aliens. Yeah. It was undocumented Documented, immigrants. Yeah. Real, real now it's non-citizen migrants yeah. doing everything you can to make it. They spent the money on those. They sent it to sanctuary cities. They did that, and now they're out. Yet, what most people don't understand, I believe he was talking to Congress when he was saying that. You know, Pat, when sometimes you give a speech, they say, who's he really talking to? Yeah. He's talking to Congress. He's talking to Congress. You got to give me money, dudes. You got to give me money. They pass these Inflation Reduction Act that has a hidden hidden briefcase full of cash that's going to Ukraine. We've we've done the yeah. autopsy on that stuff. And so now you got my is basically, I think, in the middle of a. It's kind of crazy, though. There's people in the chat going like, well, the Republican voted on. I'm like, bro, it's y'all administration wrote it up. I mean, y'all wrote it up. So it's kind of crazy. Y'all will do anything to take the blame off Trump and, I mean, off Biden and Harris. Anything. But sit there and blame them. Like, it's their administration. Like, what are y'all talking about? Exactly. Like, why do they even need a lead if you're just going to give them excuses for every failure that they have? You're, bro, you guys are proving that they can't lead because you need to make excuses for every failure that they have. You need to try to misplace the blame, move the goalposts, whatever, but to give them the full blame. What's the point of them being leaders? That's why nobody trusts them as leaders because y'all making excuses for their failures every step of the way. Or y'all just try to some ridiculous way to blame Trump. Political hurricane. Nope. Pun intended. Absolutely intended. While he's talking to Congress that he needs more money <laughs> and having making and making this very political i i don't think i'm on the page of like vote suppression these are mostly red votes these are there because that gets that gets pretty hairy and that could cause an incredible responsive turnout in the other direction but this comes down to one thing and it's something that is probably the most important thing in part of this election and that's just money and the math of where the money goes and budgeting. You know, we see every year they kick the can down the road. Oh, we'll deal with this, put more on the credit card, put more on the credit card. What's the current US federal debt? $34 trillion by the time it's 2028 over the next president, expected to be almost $50 trillion. Like how big of a hole are we trying to dig here? Now, what's interesting about how the, the sort of the budgeting works and the appropriations bill you put in there is that there's discretionary spending and the non 
discretionary spending. So what's the non-discretionary spending? I learned this when hmm. I started doing money content in 20, 2015. Uh, non-discretionary spending are things that basically Congress has no control of. They don't do it each year. It's not a part of the budget. Budget. It's mandated by law. That's Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, but not. But discretionary spending, education, transportation, the environment, law enforcement, everything like that. Uh, non, sorry, non-discretionary spending. You know what the budget is for that? Almost four trillion dollars a year. Three point nine trillion dollars discretionary spending where Congress basically gets a vote every single year and they must approve it, $1.7 trillion. Now to Vinny's point about how much should we give to foreign aid? How much should we give to domestic? Here's something to consider. Do you know what percentage of discretionary spending goes? See, look at all the excuses y'all have. Mm -mm -mm. That's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. Exactly. You, the TDS has blinded you at this point. You can't even sit here and be like, yep, this happened under Biden's administration. Yeah, they've been telling us that they we, they're giving the money to immigrants. It's immigrants over Americans. Straight proof. But y'all don't want to look it up, huh? I mean, what? You, you keep wanting to blame Republicans for something that's happened under, what, Harris administration? And as VP, well, let's be honest. She's president of the Senate. You know that comes with being VP, right? It also comes with whatever power that the president appoints you with. Like the president pointer, appointed her as the lead response responder to the southern border, or as we call her, the border czar. Like I said, it's like, bro, you don't, you guys don't even know what the what the responsibility of the vice president is. Y'all just going whatever CNN or the View tells you. Like, stop going off that. Look up what a vice president can actually do, and you would see that president of the Senate holds a lot of power goes to domestic versus foreign uh, is actually yeah. important. What percentage of the 1.7 trillion stays in the country versus leaves the country? Mm -hmm. How much leaves? 5%. So 95% stays in the country. When just I talk can't about the, the, truth, the discretionary spending. Wait, you, you, can, you can let it play. Keep playing. This how much we spent on immigrants through FEMA. Over a billion dollars, right? And this... Is straight from FEMA the shelter and service program so when everybody tries to say that no that's been debunked and all that good stuff just Google it you can Google this